So I get a lot of questions about how drying pottery works, how to slow down drying, how to speed up drying, what to do at each stage of drying, how long drying takes. In my video two weeks ago, I talked about the different stages of pottery. While controlling your drying is how you control the timeline between each stage. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. Hi friends, my name is Maya. I run a studio here in Berlin called Pottery to the People. Let's talk about drying. So first I'm going to cover how you control your drying, so how you slow down and speed up your drying, and then I'm going to be talking about different problem children of drying, and then I'm going to talk about actually my flow, how I work, and go through the different stages to sort of see how a contemporary potter works. Of course every potter is different, but uh, I figured out what works pretty well for me, and so maybe it can be helpful for you. So first I want to talk about how you slow down your drying. Now this is pretty easy, you just need to trap the moisture. So most studios will just use plastic to wrap around your pots, so maybe like an old garbage bag, but anything that's like not breathable that will trap in the moisture. So if you tuck in your pot with plastic on all sides that will basically trap the pot completely. Of course it will still dry out a bit because it's not airtight but it will slow down the drying of your pottery like dramatically. When I teach wheel classes we meet once per week and uh, this is how we wrap up our pots between sessions and this will keep your pots fresh for up to two weeks. However, if you want to slow down your drying but not stop it completely, another option is to put a towel, like a wet towel or a bed sheet even, like some fabric material over your pottery. I also had a pottery friend who used newspaper over the top of the pots. This will slow down the drying but not like stop it completely, so it will still slowly dry over a couple of days probably. Okay, so why would you want to slow down your drying? Generally people do this because there is going to be some time between making sessions that they need to like stop the drying, otherwise it will get too dry by the time they get back to it. Like if you only visit your studio once per week you can wrap your piece in plastic and it will still be workable by the next week. Another reason you might do this is if you have like a tricky pot that needs to settle into <laughs> its moisture level a little bit. I'm going to be talking about these tricky pots later on in the video. So quick drying. Sometimes you actually want to speed up the drying process. This might be because you've thrown some pots and you actually want to trim them today, but they're just too wet to trim. Or if you need to fire the pots, but they're just too wet right now to put them in the kiln. These are examples of when you'd want to speed up the drying process. Maybe it seems a little obvious, but you gotta get yourself a studio fan. Seriously guys, I use the fan like every time I'm in the studio. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit more later about how I use the fan, but a fan is like a super simple, like low budget uh, way to like control the drying. Another thing you can do is put your pots on top of a hot kiln. This is also one that I use a lot when I'm waiting for things to get dry enough to put into the kiln themselves. Um, like greenware that needs to dry before it goes into the bisque. Um, I'll very often put pots on top of a kiln to just make sure that they're totally dry and prevent any explosions in the kiln. You could also put it on a heater or do what's called candling um, your pots in a kiln if you don't have a hot kiln <laughs> just running. Candling is when you put your pots into a kiln and you very slowly increase the temperature up to 100, 150 degrees. This is just enough heat to evaporate all of the water out of the kiln, but because you do it at such a slow temperature rise, it's going to be slow enough that your pots aren't going to crack or explode in the kiln if there's still a little bit of moisture left. Sometimes when I'm setting a bisque and I'm just not sure that everything's dried out completely, I'll set a bisque like normal. I'll put it on the candle in the morning because it usually takes a few hours and then by the time the day is done the candle is finished and then I'll just turn on the bisque. That way I don't have to like set the kiln twice. I've also, <laughs> I've also heard of people candling in their kitchen oven and yes, Finally, this is the first thing that you can do in your kitchen oven at home. You can candle your pots. Re-wetting clay. Now, we've all been there. <laughs> like pottery that we just forgot to wrap up or forgot about <laughs> and we still need to trim it. We didn't quite get around to that. Like is there a way to reverse the cycle? Well, sort of. Generally, I don't recommend re-wetting your pottery. Once you started the drying process, it's totally possible and normal to slow down the drying process, but I recommend against trying to reverse the drying process. Generally, I just toss them into the reclaim bucket and make them again. The reason for this is because you're never going to be able to re-wet a pot completely. Even if you dunk your pot into some water, you're just going to dunk the outside of the pot. The inside is not actually going to get dry, so it's going to become unevenly dry. And when pots are unevenly dry, this is what causes cracking. However, there's always exceptions to pottery. I mean, if it's something that's like, you just need to do one simple thing and this object was hard for you to make for some reason, um, and you're just like going to trim it a little, for example, um, 
you can go ahead and re-wet it. Just know that you're taking a risk with it. So I'll do this by just dunking the bottom into a bowl of water, flipping it upside down, and then letting the water soak in. Uh, definitely give it some time for the water to permeate into the pot. I might do this a couple times if the pot is really dry, but each time you're taking the pot's life into your own hands, so you might destroy it, just be aware. It's also going to be much harder to trim or whatever you, whatever else you want to do with it. So um, do this only if it's like a really special pod. Otherwise you might as well call it practice and make it again. Okay, so now I want to talk about my problem children. <laughs> These are pots that are a little bit tricky and just need a little bit of extra attention in order to come out right. Attachments. Attachments are handles, feet, uh, noses, <laughs> whatever you're going to be sticking onto your pot that wasn't in the original shape of the pot. These are attachments. Anything that you're slipping and scoring. Of course, you want to add attachments during the leather hard stage. So what I always do is I add my attachments and then I'm going to wrap it again 100% in plastic and let it sit under plastic for 24 hours before I let it dry naturally. Even if I'm completely done with the, the piece, I'm still gonna wrap it again in plastic for 24 hours uh, to slow down that dry process. The reason for this is because attachments are generally thinner and smaller than the pot itself. Like think about a handle is like a much smaller object than a pot. And because it's smaller and thinner, it's going to be drying out a lot faster than the pot. Likewise, you usually start with fresh clay to make a handle and you're working with a leather hard pot. So the handle's already wetter, but then you're attaching it to a leather hard pot and then the handle dries faster. So <laughs> basically what you're doing when you're wrapping it in plastic is you're trapping all the moisture and it's, all, it's gonna create this very humid environment underneath the plastic where all the moisture levels between the handle and the pot are going to equalize. They're all going to become one level of moisture and that really helps with cracking. So once you remove the plastic, it will all dry evenly and that will help you with cracking. Okay, so my other problem child is flat things. This is plates, this is tiles, anything that needs to be flat. Basically, clay hates straight lines. <laughs> so what you want to do is slow dry these things under pressure to prevent them from warping. I always recommend making flat, thin things a little bit thicker than you expect like it should be because don't forget your clay is going to shrink in the kiln. And unless you want something really brittle, you should beef it up a little bit. <laughs> so like if I'm making a plate or something, I'm never gonna make it thinner than a half centimeter. Like that's too thin for a plate. So what I'll do with plates is I'll make them, I'll let them dry to leather hard, just in the air, and then once they're strong enough to support their own weight, I'll start stacking them in between boards. The weight of the plate above is going to hold that one straight and the boards will keep them all flat. And I'll probably put a board on top and then a little weight on the top as well, and then I'll wrap the whole thing in plastic. I'll let it sit like that under plastic for about two days, and then after two days I'll remove the plastic just remove the plastic though, and I'll keep them in the board stack and just let them dry out evenly. And then like a day before I want to fire them or something, they'll be mostly dry at this point. Um, I'll remove the board so I can just double check that they're gonna be completely dried out before I put them in the kiln. Okay, so lastly, I want to talk about the production flow that I do. Now, this has evolved over the years. It's not exactly the same as what it used to be, but I'm pretty happy with how it is now. Like my production flow focuses on efficiency and ease because Hashtag lazy potter. <laughs> so if I am throwing, I'm going to do it first thing in the morning. That's the first task I'll do for the day. And once I'm done throwing, I'm going to take my pots and I'm gonna put them right in front of the fan. I do this so about an hour later, the pots will actually be strong enough that I can flip them over. And then I'm actually saving myself one step. So like always the flipping is one step, um, but I combine these two in one day and I've never ever ever found the fan to cause like my pots to either warp or uh, crack or nothing. Like it's never caused a problem. Uh, I do also rib off the extra moisture, like the extra slip in my pots, like while I'm on the wheel. So they're not like super sloppy wet pots to begin with, but then I put them in front of the fan so that they dry out pretty quickly. Then if it's cold in the studio and I'm gonna be in the next day, I'll just probably leave them uncovered. Um, they won't usually dry out, like in wintertime, they won't usually dry out too fast. In summertime, it's a different story. So maybe I'll put them down in the cellar or I'll just put some light plastic over them, depending on when I want to trim them. If I can't trim them for a few days, I'll just wrap them completely in plastic at that point. Once it's leather hard, of course, I'll trim and I'll add any attachments that I need to make and I'll also sign it. If I'm adding an attachment, I'm going to as I mentioned, wrap it in plastic for 24 hours, and then the next day I'll unwrap it and let it just dry naturally. 
if, if I'm not adding any attachments, like if it's like a bowl or something super simple, I'll just let it dry out immediately from Leather Heart and I've never had a problem with that. Yeah, and then I'll just let it dry out for like maybe two days at least, up to a week, you know, however long it takes me. Um, and then I'll usually put it on a hot kiln before I put it into the bisque just to make sure that all of the moisture has evaporated. If it's been a week, I don't need to put it on a hot kiln. It just depends on the pot and also the thickness of the pot too. So that's really it. That's all I can tell you about drying. When, you know, when I was brainstorming this video, I was like, am I gonna have enough to talk about drying? Like, it seems like such a simple concept, but honestly, this is something I get asked a ton. This is just another one of those boring pop topics that's like really important to potters and potters kind of obsess about. Um, so hopefully that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, just write them down below in the comments. Lately, I've been going through the comments once every couple of weeks, so I will get to you eventually. Just uh, any questions you have, just write them down below. Otherwise, if you want to hear more from me and my studio, you can find me on Instagram at Pottery to the People. And otherwise, have a nice day. I will see you next time. Bye, friends. <laughs>